Yusuke has a working prototype in the middle of the Sharjah desert. Line, so we have developed different options. Right. First the wall, the port by itself can be even humanity retreated a little. You know, Correct. the supersonic planes, where are they? Yes. Where is the Concorde? Yes. No, yes. it is written off. It reaches it's the highest speed, I think, 345. Percent. Call it even 400. Right. With two passengers. Right. So this is this is the main advantage. Just fair compare. This is this our our mind. yeah our founder and Dr. Anatoly Yunitsky, who is world famous scientist, who is philosopher, and who is coming with all these inventions. Yeah, because what I am telling you, of course, it was not invented by me. I'm just manager, but it was invented by his brain. What do we really need now? We need publicity. Right. We need people to know about us. All right, so I have the absolute honor and the pleasure to welcome a revolutionary project here on stage today, represented by Mr. Oleg Yuskai. Please give us a round of applause for him. Woo! 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 Welcome. All right, wonderful. It's an absolute honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. To everyone that doesn't know, Yuskai has a working prototype in the middle of the Sharjah Desert of a monorail that might just change the world as we know it, right? When we think of monorail, we're probably thinking about what they have on the palm there. This, in a better version, exists as a proof of technology in Sharjah. You can go see it. It's actually, they sit out of the world's, or the UAE's only fully ecological wooden office, which I find absolutely amazing. And they have a working prototype. Welcome, Mr. Oleg, and thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, it's not in the in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> this is the American University City area, actually. So, but in general, yes. On the just from scratch, we developed this line, and we built it in order to show people and to prove that technology works. And by the way, we have got certification and uh, the whole line the whole complex was certified by tuv company so it means that now we can assure public that it is safe it is working and i am sure that it will come to the city soon wonderful mr oleg I, I i was very impressed and and i remember as if it was yesterday when i came to visit you at at you sky for everyone that doesn't know what you sky is can you give us in your own words what is you sky uh, of course, yes. So actually, you sky, this is the new transportation technology uh, that is based on movement of the vehicle on the suspended rails. So uh, you should not mix it with a uh, cable car right. where the cable by itself moving. I think it, our technology more looks like tram where rails are suspended in the air right. and it gives a lot of advantages we don't utilize land we don't create traffic jams that you could see when you were coming to Big dubai marina yes so and uh, of course uh, it is very safe because there is no interaction there are no crossroads with cars and other things so it gives a lot of opportunities a lot of advantages but the main thing that it gives cost saving Right. Because we are cheaper than any, any, any similar transport available in the world. That is absolutely impressive. Um, can we talk about how this would compare, talking about a cost of project, can we talk about how this would compare to what is a similar project in the UAE? For example, what we see on the Palm. I would assume that it will be at least 10 times cheaper. 10 times cheaper. With a similar like um, passenger flow. Right. With the similar technical specifications, it will be around from seven to eight times cheaper. Yeah. That is absolutely impressive. To, to anyone that's listening here right now, it would be absolutely amazing to, to maybe go on the USKY website because as much as we explain it, it's not going to do the technology and the revolutionary aspect of this technology justice. So they have amazing videos on their website and, and I had the pleasure to actually ride in one of these, these pods Tell us more about what these pods can do other than passenger transport. Um, we are, yes, exactly. As soon as we have the transportation line, so we have developed different options. 
Right. First of all, the port by itself can be in uh, different options, like VIP mode, like passenger mode, um, and other, other options. Plus, we developed the cargo solution. It means that we have special vehicles that will move um, bulk loads, like sand, aggregate, and uh, coal, and we have vehicles that will move fully fledged containers, right. like 20 feet container, 40 feet container. It will go in the sky. And again, if you extrapolate this to the situation in the UAE, you know these big, heavy uh, container trucks, they are creating a lot of issues with traffic. Yes. So as soon as you shift all movement of containers to the sky, then of course uh, the roads will be free. That's amazing. So, as far as I understand, the first time this, is, this, is, this technology is live and working is here in the UAE? Um, not. We have, we have the similar test and certification center in Belarus. Okay. Uh, from where this technology origins. And uh, we have five lines there. We, we are developing, actually, the main idea of coming to the UAE there were dual purpose. Right. The first was to be close to customer. As soon as we consider that uh, UAE Middle East is a huge market and it's very promising market for us. Plus, we want to test our technology in these climate conditions. Right. And we have made a lot of adoptions. We have done a lot of modifications okay. in order to um, tailor our technical specifications to local hot climate conditions. And, and why is the hot climate such an important thing in this equation? Uh, because hot climate, it affects technique in general, you know. For example, you have to have special rubbers, you have to have special gaskets, right. sealing, but right. what we, for example, what we found that rails, they become covered with sand right and uh, of course it creates some problems for our vehicle to move of so what we have done we installed very powerful impellers that blow off sand from the rail so for example it's very similar it's very simple example what the challenge technical challenge we faced and how we solved it now it works perfectly and this, something like this you will only identify when you prove that exactly right. exactly right. until right. you start doing something you know drawings and calculation this is one part yes they should be done but you cannot tune you cannot polish your technology you will not be sure in your technology until you practically test it wonderful now mr oleg i know you have a vast experience in the country Looking around me here, I see cars, I can hear the engines in the background. And I can't help but notice, we're all moving still on four, four, four wheels, right? Uh, a few years ago, we thought, yeah, we will have flying cars, we will have new mobility solutions. I'm wondering, what is the latest trend in mobility? And do you think we're going to continue moving in cars as much as we are today? This is a very good question. Actually, a lot of disputes, they take place. Because we understand that humanity, our civilization, uh, they need huge jump in mobility. Right. We are stagnated. Look, we, we drive cars, if you go around, 99% of these cars, their concept and their designs, they were created in 70s. Correct, you're right. If you go to the plane, there is, n there is nothing new. Exactly. You know, even humanity retreated a little. You know, Correct. the supersonic planes, where are they? Yes. Where is the Concorde? Yes. No, yes. it is written off. Yes. So it means that talking about transport and talking about mobility, definitely we stagnated. Yeah. And, okay, we retreated from space, actually. Yeah. You know, what we have now with the Elon Musk, and uh, it's more show than... Uh, I'm with you 100%. Exactly. I, I'm so, loving yeah. where you're going with this. Exactly. So it means that something should be done. And what people, they try to do now, look, look at Tesla car. 
Right. Of course, this is electromobile. Right. But still, this is the car. Still, it occupies the same asphalt road. It needs Correct. asphalt road. Right. Still, it can be affected by traffic jam. Still, it can be crashed in traffic accident. So it means that this is not critical change. Correct. This is 100%. just this is just some attempt to replace motor from petrol engine to electrical motor. That's it. But what humanity needs, humanity needs to rebuild the recognition of such thing as public transport. Okay. You know, public transport. Everybody thinks, so do you travel by public transport? It means that you are poor man. You know, Correct. that traveling by public transport, it becomes like, you know, feature that people try to avoid. Why? Because um, you need to make public transport more attractive for right. people. Right. Because now that's all, that's all. And what we are doing, we want, if you, if you traveled in our uh, pod, you could see that, yes, we made VIP version. Amazing. But yeah. the, the, the way of traveling, it's very comfortable when you can relax, when you can look around, and when you get pleasure from traveling. Correct. So the, the main idea is to introduce new kind of public transport. The main idea is to introduce new um, approach to mobility, right. where people will at least will have chance to go away from all these cars, trucks, from all these, you know, like uh, gases and emissions and all these things. But till now, 99.999% of everybody, starting from Greta Tuberg and other things, they right. just talk. Right. Right. This is the problem. So we need action. I, I'm with you 100%, and I think you, Sky, is, is charting that, that road, right? But what do you think is the real inhibitor? You touched on this amazing concept, which I'm not sure everyone understands, but the design principles that all of these cars, as, as modern as they may be, are sitting on are still design principles that are age old. Right? We still are traveling on four wheels. We're still traveling on airplanes that were designed 50 years ago. Uh, like you said, even the Concorde, we've lost it along the way. Yep. Right? What's hindering us? Very good question. I, I, I don't think that I have enough time to explain this. <laughs> yes, it's definitely philosophical. <laughs> because it, it's it's philosophical question. Yes, yes. I would say that many, many, many reasons. First of all, there is no competition. Okay. Okay. Why in 70s it was like ex explosive development? Because there were competition between superpowers. So they invested in all these things. So this competition um, has gone. And now everybody became more practical. Why I should spend money for some test and certification center? Why I should spend money for something that will not give me return in next one, two, three years? So this is the first. The second, of course, bureaucracy. You know, like standards. Now there are thousands of standards that were imposed. And now tell me how you can bring something new when there is no standard for this. Right. You know, Wright Brothers. Mm. I put my hand, if Wright Brothers come today with the plane, they will not be able to commercialize it. I'm 100% sure about that. No yeah. one will allow them to fly because they, for, there is no such standard, you know. At that time, yes, it was possible. But now I face this issue that when you are coming with something new, everybody tells, no, 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 no. What standard it should be certified in accordance to? There is no this standard. This is new. No, in this case, go and, you know, and the same. It's like catch-22 situation. You will not be able to get uh, facilities, finance, until you commercialize it. But you cannot commercialize because it. Because there's no until, standard Yeah, for exactly. It. Right. So right. all these new technologies, they are just, you know, like catch-22 situation that it is very, very difficult to break through. Even right. now with us, we have a lot of obstacles. Right. We have a lot of critics. We have a lot of, like, uh, unfair com competitors that are given a lot of bad information about us. But my answer is very simple. You don't believe, come and write. Right. This is something that we created. But others just talk, 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 talk.
I hate to go there because it's slightly <laughs> political, but talking about Hyperloop, because, you know, it's one of those that <laughs> I, I have to hear your point, and this is recorded, I want to remind you, but I want to hear your point of view about Hyperloop, because what, it's been now maybe eight, nine years that we're hearing it'll come next year, it'll come next year, it'll come the year after. Is this all talk or will we ever see anything? It's very simple. What I heard, correct me if I'm wrong, that now Elon Musk with boring company, they signed contract for Los Angeles to create the grid of hyperloop tunnels under the Los Angeles. Right. But he made little bit modification. You know how it will look like now? Like there will be tunnels, and inside these tunnels, Tesla car will travel. So in the end, he invented the metro. Am I right? Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yes. Right. So wh what else? That you know, it, it, technically, I would not say that it is impossible to implement w all these dreams, but it's so much difficult, and economically, it's not feasible. For example, when you were there, you haven't seen, but now yeah. we have in our test and certification center, we have pod that moves with speed 500 kilometers per hour. Right now, active. Right now. It is not moving because... Obviously, yeah. yeah but, but, but pod by itself, it is there. Right. So our pod, it, it moves 500 kilometers per hour, having motor just 500 horsepower. Wow. Less than all these monsters that you could see here. Yeah. F six passengers, 500 horsepower motor, and possibility to reach Abu Dhabi from Dubai in 18 minutes. My God. And this is what we created. And this is what you can touch, you can see it, and other things. Right. But again, in order to test it, we have to build line, not 400 meters, as you saw. Of course but 20 kilometers. At least. So again, this is the challenge. This is the challenge to find land. This is the challenge to find money. This is the challenge to pursue people that it will work. Of course. How to do this? This is the point. I want to switch gear a little bit from reality because I liked what you did. You said if the Wright brothers would be living in this world that we are in today, they would probably never be able never. to take an airplane never. out. Right? So I want to talk about what do you believe are the new design principles. We talked about the old design principles. We're seeing them all the way around us. What are the new design principles, the new innovations in fu what is future mobility? We keep hearing this world. Yeah, this is, this is a very good question again. And what I would say that now, now in, this, in this world that is connected with modern communications, that is very advanced technically and other things. You cannot give some innovation for just separate field in a separate direction. So when you are coming with innovation, it means that you have to, you, 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 you have to change the whole, you know, like uh, infrastructure. the whole infrastructure, yes. Yes. the whole philosophy, call it like that. Yes. That, for example, if we go further with our transportation system, we propose new what we call liner city. So right. it means that our mobility, our mobility solution will give people opportunity to travel fast and comfortable from one place to another place. So in this case, if you have chance to reach this nice place in 15 minutes, somewhere from the middle of the desert, why you would not stay there? where it is calm, where it is uh, ecologically I friendly, so that's the first and other things. Yes. So yes. it means that uh, you, are, you are not only creating mobility solution, you are creating everything urban that solution. comes with, right. yes, with this, like urban solution, living solution, and mobility solution. So the whole life philosophy, right. philosophy you have right. to create in order to implement this invention. I understand. This is one. This is why I am sure you have more. Tell me more. I have more, of course. So, of course, the um, power energy. Yeah. So we Perfect. have yes. definitely we have to shift from 
petrol engines to electrical motors. But again, this is the issue that it's not when we tell that, okay, we are shifting to electrical motors and we are saving nature, it is not true. Correct. Why? Because, uh, you know, the damage to nature that will, uh, that will be caused by production of batteries and utilization of batteries, exactly. it is much worse than damage you are creating with this petrol engine. Correct. So this is not the point. The point that uh, you have to create power saving technologies. Okay. So it means that not, not no matter what kind of motor or what kind of engine do you apply, the matter how much power you need to, to spend run. in right, order right, to do right, right. certain transportation work. That is why I underline that our machine will reach 500 kilometers per hour, having motor just 500 horsepower, right. and go to Bugatti Verona, that is there, right. and what is the motor uh, power? 1,700 1, horsepower. Yes. Yes. And it reaches it's the highest speed, I think, 345 or Call something. it even 400 right. with two passengers. Right. So this is, this is the main advantage, just fair compare. Very good. So we said linear cities and a change of urban thinking and mobility thinking. Yes. And we spoke about how we need to think about new energy solutions. Now, there's one thing that I saw in your office that since I left, didn't leave me. It's been in the back of my head, and I've been looking forward to, to, to tell the world about it a little bit more. It's, tell me about this project around the equator, this vision around yeah. the equator. This is this our, our, yeah, our founder, and uh, Dr. Anatoly Unitsky, who is a world-famous scientist, who is a philosopher, and who is coming with all these inventions. That, because what I am telling you, of course, it was not invented by me. I am right. just manager, but he's real visionary. So actually, what he this is this is the let's assume call it final point that civilization will not succeed in saving the planet until it will remove all heavy industry from the surface. It should go to space. Okay. And we cannot send this industry to space using just rockets. rockets. Correct. Because rockets, they damage the nature, but yes. the main thing that rockets, well, 5,000 tons, it's nothing. It's right. not efficient. Right. So Dr. Anatoly Unitsky, he developed this system where in one go, million tons will go to, the, to space. And actually, How does this that is, work? yes, this is the, okay. This it's is a vision. It's a vision. It's a vision, we are, we are, it's a vision yeah. but it is already a scientifically approved vision, actually. Right, right. So this is the ring uh, around the equator with a uh, rotor that is rotating inside this ring. And then when it starts rotating, this ring starts expanding because of centrifugal force. Right. And in next, you know that the radius of this ring will be around 6,000 kilometers. Okay. The radius of the Earth. Right. But in order to find itself in space, it should expand its radius just for 300 kilometers. Wow. Just 5%. So it means just little bit expansion, and this ring will find itself in outer space. So if you fix to this ring all loads, passenger cabins, uh, I don't Industry, know, for, for thousands yeah. of people, cabins yeah. and other other things, they will go in one go to the space. And when this ring, they sto they, it stops rotating, then this ring will come back. So for next portion of loads. So in this case, having this system, humanity will be able to move all heavy industries and other things into, into the space. space. And then expand into the space. So <laughs> yes, I mean, I, I, I'm, 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 you've explained it beautifully, but I think you know anyone that hasn't, you know, grasped it, go online, see the video. Since and this must have been four or five months ago that we met, it hasn't left me because the idea is the beauty of the idea is its simplicity. This isn't this isn't real rocket science. It is it is very simple. Yes, it is relatively cheap. So, for example, U.S. should reject military spending just for two years right. in order to implement this system. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad that we, we got a chance to, to speak about this. 
Um, is there is there anything you believe we should still touch on before before we leave today? Of course. Um, first of all, I would express my great appreciation to you, Tim, to your Thank team, you to you, sir, and because what do we really need now? We need publicity. Right. We need people to know about us. Yes. Because um, this is our main problem, that we have brilliant technologies, we have achieved a lot, but we need everybody to know about option that is available here in the UAE. Look, I don't know, 90% of population, when they stay in traffic jams, they don't know that solution is somewhere nearby. Yes, right there in Charger, exactly. right there in Charger. So that is why I want to express my great appreciation for you. It is an honor and a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Oleg from USKY, it's an absolute visionary solution. I think everyone should go out there, read a little bit more about it, particularly about how we will change the future of transportation. Can we have a round out of applause for Mr. Oleg, please? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.